So, on this channel, I've discussed both the offensive and the defensive sides of cybersecurity. And in this video, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, and that is when both of these forces combine in an exercise called the Purple Team. Hey guys, my name is Colin Kelly, and if you're not familiar with my channel, I am a cybersecurity consultant, and on this channel, we talk about various cybersecurity topics and also how to get into the field of cybersecurity. So I'm sure at least most of you have heard the terms red teams and blue teams in a cybersecurity context. I even have two videos covering these topics in my uh, channel. Red teams test the security systems of a company while blue teams really focus on defending them. And in this video, we're going to really talk about when these two worlds collide and both of these teams work together for, to actually improve the security posture of the company. This video today is brought to you by Exabeam. And later on in this video, we're going to be talking about how Exabeam makes companies better equipped to find and manage threats within their environments. So today we're going to be talking about what this red-blue collaboration is and what it is not. And my main goal of this video is to really just present the concept of the purple team and dispel many of the myths around this topic because it really is a big buzzword in the field. So I think this is a great opportunity to really just dive in and, and define the purple team for you all. More mature security organizations adopt a third type of exercise called the purple team. And this is something that can be performed by either consultants or in-house employees. And actually, over the past six months, my main focus has been in purple teaming. And I think that this is one of the most valuable ways that security teams can test and improve their security posture. If purple teams are executed correctly, they can have a really constructive effect. And it really eliminates some of the contention between the blue and the red teams. So purple team exercises vary very much from organization to organization and the individual test cases obviously depend on the different security demands of the organization that they're being performed on but a common trend within purple teams is to map their um, their test cases to the miter attack framework and the attack framework the attack part stands for the adversarial tactics techniques and common knowledge and this really is a great framework that maps out um, all of the different phases within the actual the, the actual threat groups are using and then lays out the different um, attack vectors that they will be using it on. So now that we have all the background information out of the way, let's get into the fun stuff. So I think it would be a really good opportunity in this video just to give like a brief example of, one, of a test case, a very simple test case, and then kind of show you how, how the red team would perform their task, the blue side would perform their task, and then there's a the collaboration at the end where they actually discuss um, what's going on on each side and how this can be differed within the company to help their overall security posture. So I'm just going to use a external password spray as a very basic example and hopefully it will help you see the red and blue collaboration part of the purple team. So um, if I was the red team operator I would be um, first off communicating with the blue team on when I was going to be doing my password spray. I would record a lot of details on my side that can be used later on for when we're going through the logs to see if we have any visibility into this. And then I would be executing my password spray. And then while this is going on, um, someone who's on the blue team operator side of things would actually be going through the logs and they have, um, it obviously differs from organization to organization, but there are some main goals that you actually, that you want to identify to see um, how your security posture currently is and what needs to be improved. So one of the first things that you want to identify is, number one, is there logging on this, um, this different test case? So first they're going to be going through, they're actually going to be seeing if it's logged. And it's probably going to be getting logged, okay? So then the next one they're going to be seeing, okay, is this going, is this going, are these logs or is this anomaly going to be creating an alert? And then this is where you actually glean the useful information. And this really depends on your, your security tooling. Um, but then they're going to be seeing if it actually generates an alert. And then lastly, they're going to be seeing, okay, it generates an alert, but does this alert um, tie to any IRW? Does it tie to any workflow that someone who is actually working in the SOC in a real world, um, they would see this alert and then they would be able to action the alert. And if there are actually uh, processes and procedures in there to go through the entire workflow of the alert and actually determine if it is a true or false positive. Really running through this helps expose a lot of the holes in some organizations security programs and ultimately it is their job to really shore up these holes before the next purple team exercise. 
And one of the main goals within these purple team exercises is to see this, this incremental improvement every single time. Um, if you're executing these, uh, for example, quarterly or biannually, you do not want to be seeing the same, the same holes and because that, that would show no improvements. Ultimately, after four or five or six purple teams, um, these organizations will really nail down this workflow and they'll be able to tie on the blue team side, they'll be able to tie a lot of their incident response workflows or their investigations into the purple team and actually measure their results that way. So along with plotting their success within the blue team side of things, it's really a, a great metric to show this improvement or the lack of improvement up to management if you're actually trying to enact some changes, if you're trying to get some new tooling, if you're trying to get rid of tooling. Because ultimately from these exercises, you really flesh out which tools are useful and which tools are just not being used to their potential or they're not useful at all. So now that we brought up tooling, I want to talk about Exabeam. And Exabeam reached out to me for a video collaboration. I was extremely excited to work with them because I have worked with Exabeam's tooling on multiple purple teams and I can really see how their products help their help security teams really get some valuable insights from alerts. Um, and then they just give it a great visibility into what's actually going on in the environment. Exabeam solutions bring the power of machine learning and user behavior analytics to actually identify these threats within your organization. So the more information you're actually sending and feeding to Exabeam, the more robust the findings will actually be. So by executing these purple team exercises, you can actually really see um, what different types of log sources you need to be sending to, to Exabeam to actually get the most robust results. So thanks again to Exabeam for making this video possible.